To me, nature-based solutions involves really taking a step back as humans and observing for a moment all the processes, chemical, biological, physical processes that nature does on its own. And it's gaining an understanding of those processes and thinking how can we how can we use these to our advantage during, during this period of climate change? And how can we enhance these processes in any way? It's taking what nature already does, understanding it and working in harmony with those processes. Hi, I'm Celeste. I am a PhD student and I research the transport and transformations of carbon from source to sea. The second I step outside now, I can't really just not think about some of the science behind it. I go outside and I, I think I just notice the connections between every living thing slightly more because, you know, when you're researching carbon, carbon is in every living thing. So when we think about carbon moving, this can happen in many different ways. A leaf falling from a tree that contains carbon, you know, transported through a river that can be broken down and degrade. It might be buried and sink to that sediment and actually be stored as carbon there. When you have a tree, carbon is stored within that tree. When you fell it, carbon is still stored within the wood, but carbon can also be released into waters just through runoffs. So the work that I do is a lot about understanding uh, the carbon cycle, carbon movements and transport, but it does have practical applications as well. As I'm looking at carbon transported from um, areas of forest to Scottish sea logs, it really links up to our global drive to increase tree cover and to afforest parts of the world. And it's something that we have a drive for here in Scotland, absolutely. But you really need to plant the right tree in the right place here, because previously we have planted trees in areas such as peatlands. And we now know through further research and understanding that this has been very detrimental to our carbon stores. Peatlands store incredible amounts of carbon on their own. In the cases of the, the kind of forestry in the right places and peatland restoration as well, the, the one of the benefit is, is obviously that um, in, in some cases there is a distribution of precipitation and water in the soil. And in many cases, natural systems are a little bit better at reducing peak flow. Um, that's because it takes longer for the, the water to move across the catchment and reach the, the rivers. Um, so in terms of flood mitigation, that might all kind of help reduce the, the, the amount of water. This is probably complementary so, to some of the man-made infrastructures that can be built, but also um, it, it could also be much less expensive in the longer term, you know, than having to build new, new, new infrastructure. So we need this research and understanding, such as the research I'm doing, um, looking at specific catchments to say, is this suitable place to plant trees? How does carbon move through this environment when you have forests here? So I think there's this narrative that as we look to address the climate crisis, that this requires a lot of sacrifices from us as humans. And in reality, I think a lot of the changes that we have to make can result in you know, positive outcomes for humans as well. If we look at the most um, sensible, environmentally beneficial ways and places to plant uh, forests, for example, for, for the purpose of, of carbon storage, then I think a lot of um, sea lock catchments, potentially more upland areas in Scotland, would be forested. This would be beneficial for the biodiversity and the wildlife there, but also for us as humans as well to enjoy. The more we understand and appreciate and I feel a bond with the environment, the, the more we all care for it and actually want to help it. So I think definitely finding spaces where, where you know, humans and nature can, can interact is essential just for creating that connection between, between humans and the environment. For me, being in a bog is the best thing in the world. And, and I enjoy being out in the mountains, out in the woods, out in the forest. Being in the natural environment helps us kind of feel better. You could, you could call them something like the natural health services that nature provides and, and just as some of the other ecosystem services that, that are provided, I, I suppose these are the ones that would relate to how people feel when they're in nature. Instead of think of what we're losing, is think of what we are gaining as we make these changes. Um, what positive impacts come as a result of, of, of changing certain parts of the environment or changing certain things in our lives? There is no solving the climate crisis without solving like the biodiversity crisis. When we have a healthy earth, 
This is represented by other things flourishing. This is represented by nature flourishing. In many cases, the destruction of natural habitat that leads or the fragmentation of natural habitat that leads to the loss of species is also the same destruction and fragmentation of habitat that will reduce the, the capacity of the natural environment to help us with fighting climate change, whether it is through the sequestration of carbon, the mitigation of flood, or, or, or just the, the natural resilience that's built into the, the natural world that we are losing when we destroy these ecosystems. Because the nature-based solutions are exceptional at tackling all of these different aspects at once. So this woodland's filled with deciduous trees and it's got a mixture. We've got some oak trees, some birch in here as well. The older and larger the trees get, the more wildlife might be here as well. So often in this forest, you can find lots of red squirrels scurrying up trees. This is the kind of woodland that it would be amazing if it was planted um, in different areas, over wider spread areas next to monocultures so we have that diversity in the links for wildlife to move from one space to the other. I definitely think that these kind of spaces can contribute to nature-based solutions to climate change. Uh, they benefit the environment and everything and everyone that lives within it. <laughs>